A query is based upon one or more tables of data and or other queries and it can be used to filter in only those fields that you want to see and you can organize those fields into any order like what field comes first, second, third and so on as well as performing calculations on those fields. Well, those fields have to contain numbers, of course. And so if I want to create a query based upon, like, let's say this table, let's double click to take a look at the table real quick. And let's say that I just want to see in my query, not all of these fields, just the asset tag and the date received. And the reason why I want to use a query, because it's more efficient, just to pull up two fields, at least in two ways. One way, is because when you open up the table it's pulling up additional fields it'll slow down your network or your computer especially if you have like oh gosh a lot of fields here that it's got to pull in all that data for but also maybe slow you down because if I want to focus on the asset tag and the date received I got this guy that's in the way so if I got to go from well pick a number here and go 1008 this column's not right next to it is it this one's in the way now you don't have to create a query if you want to well do some organization within the table here like as far as maybe putting the date received field next to the asset tag so you can go ahead and go from one field to the next and not have to jump a field and you can do that one of a couple of ways you can either right click on the field the column header the label for that column the field name here manufacturer because when you right click on it it selects the entire column and it allows you to hide that field Cool. Let's go ahead and click and drag and select the others and right click on the selection there to hide those as well. Now that's fine, but only for that session. And what I mean by that is that, well, if I go ahead and close out and it says you want to save this layout, in other words, keep the fields that are visible, visible, and the other ones hidden, hidden, you could say yes. So when you come back and double click, well, there you go. But what if you want to change this now and go, okay, that was fine for that session, but now I want to see a few more fields or all the fields. And then from time to time, come back to viewing just these two. Well, you can go ahead and do all that work. Or the other option is to create a query based upon this table and take a snapshot of it or set it up that you want to be able to see just those two fields and call it query one, fields one and two, or however you want to name it. And then for maybe a third field, go ahead and save a second query based upon this table that shows just those three fields. So that way I can just go ahead and double click query one to see those two, double click query two to see three fields and not have to tweak it just to go back to the way I want to see it or to see other fields. So it's just for that session as it were. Now to go ahead and unhide the fields, just right click on any column header here and go down to unhide. You can see all those that are not checked are the ones that are hidden. So we want to check those to bring them all back, close out. And then the other way, instead of hiding the fields, is you can go ahead and click and drag and move the columns around by clicking on the column header, holding down the left mouse button and dragging over. And there you go. So that way you can just look from this column to that one and not have to jump over one. But again, it's not very efficient if you want to be able to just view these two fields here and pull up only those two as opposed to the rest. Well, it's more efficient as far as you not having your eyes wander or trying to connect the fields when they're just right next to each other. Now, if that's not a selling point for you to want to use a query, well, you can base a query upon two or more tables. In other words, I've got my manufacturer number here, but I don't know the name of the manufacturer. So if we're having problems with these computers that seem to be number three, well, what's number three? I'd have to open up the manufacturer's table, right? To find out the name that the ID is tied to. So I'll double click, number three is Macron. So that can be very annoying. Instead, I can create a query based upon these two tables to just pull in the name if I don't want the manufacturer ID and I just want to see the name. So I'd get a spreadsheet like this, but in a query, of course, that just pulls in um, these, like let's say the asset tag, the date received, and the purchase price, and then have over here the manufacturer name. So I'm not pulling up any extra fields from this table or any extra from the manufacturers. Now you could say, wait a second, what about the subdata sheets? Can I just go ahead and insert the manufacturers table into this one as a subdata sheet? So in that subdata sheet training video that we went over, you get a little plus sign that you can click on. So like for this record right here, I could click on it to expand it, and for number three, it would show down below Macron. Well, yes, but remember, the subdata sheet pulls in everything, 
And so if I had a lot of fields in the manufacturers, it's not as efficient, especially if I don't need to see additional fields, but maybe just the manufacturer ID and name. Well, that's all it's got, but I'm seeing if it had more. If you don't want to pull in those additional fields and be more efficient, then again, we're back to the query. So let's go ahead and create a query based upon these two tables, the computers and the manufacturers. And like I said, let's go ahead and pull in the asset tag, the date received, the purchase price, and the manufacturer's name. Now we want to make sure that these tables are related because when I create the query based upon these two tables, if there's nothing that links them up, that relates them, then there's nothing preventing like this record here that says three. Well, they are related because we've got the foreign key field here saying that, okay, which record does this ID go to? But you can see right here, that's the foreign key field, the manufacturer. Let me hover over to the right of that column header until I can get arrows pointing in opposite directions. Double click really fast, manufacturer ID. So there's the foreign key manufacturer ID, which is the primary key, the manufacturer ID. Well, you don't see it here. Let me double click really fast in the manufacturer's table. Let's just go ahead, come up here to the database tools tab, relationships group, click on relationships, and there we go. We've got the computer's table, the manufacturer ID, and you can see it's related to the primary key field over in the manufacturer's table, so we're good to go. Because if we try to create a query based upon two tables that aren't related, well, you're going to get a field that you pull in from this table if this wasn't related. That's not synced up with anything over here. But because they are related, then whatever manufacturer number is on record, let's see number one, it's going to have the correct name here that we're going to pull over from the manufacturer field as opposed to just not being related and being jumbled. So great. Now you can either have them related directly when you create your query or indirectly. So I could have the departments table create a query based upon that and also include the manufacturers because even though they're not directly related, well, indirectly through all these tables, it will see it and bring it up. So maybe for this department, HR, we only use computers or give HR the computers manufactured by Macron. And so that would be good to know and to be able to pull up really quick. Now when we create our query, this brings up a good point. If I just want to see the manufacturer name, the asset tag, the date received, and the purchase price, I don't have to include the ID because that's all done behind the scenes. Once we have it related, as you see here, it'll keep the records organized and know that for record one, if it was ID number three, Macron, even though I don't pull in the ID to see my query, it will know that Macron is for record number one because it's already taken care of it and keeping it organized behind the scenes. So that's really nice. Let's go ahead and close out of here. Close out of this and we'll save the layout and that. Save that as well. And to create our query, come up here, click on the Create tab. Let's go down to the Queries group. And you got two ways of creating a query. You can do it by wizard or by design. Design is from scratch by wizard. Microsoft has what are called wizards in it that is going to ask you a bunch of questions based upon your answers. It's going to create, in this case, a query for us. So let's go ahead and click on it. And there we go. And so the first question, the query, is what kind of query do you want to create? You can see down below that this wizard creates a select query. Well, the simple query is called a select query. And there are other action queries. Well, we've got a few here, like the cross tab, finding duplicates or unmatched. And there's additional queries, but I want to keep it simple. So the wizard's going to create a select query from the fields that we pick. And those fields can be based upon two or more tables and or other queries. And you can see over here, I just had the four tables. It won't be any other queries because I don't have any other queries. Let's go ahead and click OK. The second question is, is which fields do you want in your query? So in the image here, you can see you got a bunch of their different data sheets representing tables or queries that you want to pull some fields from and put it all into one data sheet, well, in the data sheet of this query that we're creating. And then down below, you can choose from tables or queries. We just have tables, so when you click on the drop-down arrow, you can see the four here comes from four over here. And so we got our computers, and down below, all the fields that are available from the computers table and over here, what fields we want to add to our query, we want to select. And you can do that one of a couple of ways. You can either select one here and click the arrow to add it over to the right. Or if you want to move it back, click on the arrow to move it back. Or if you want to add all of them, click on the double arrows, add them all, let's put them all back. Or you can go ahead and just double click, like double click on the asset tag. 
I don't want the manufacturer ID, so we can skip that. And even though we don't add it, it'll still keep track of it. The records together, like what manufacturer ID and name goes to record one, two, and three. So this is just for us, what we want to see. Let's do the date received, double click, and the purchase price. Now I want the manufacturer name, but it's not in this table. So we have to go to the other table manufacturers to be able to add the manufacturer name. Double click and there we go. So I have a total of four fields from two different tables. The first three from computers, the last one from the manufacturer. So let's go ahead and click next. And it says, would you like to add a detail or summary query? Now why is it asking me that? It's because of the purchase price field. It's a number field. So I can either show the detail of all those fields or I can get a summary of the purchase price field. And you'll notice over here that you get different images. So if I do the detail, it says if I'm pulling in numbers from one table or query and numbers from another, then it keeps them separate, the details. But if I want to go ahead and add them together or sum them up or get the average, then what it does is it takes them, and you can see the numbers here. Let's see, five and seven, and it puts them over here. What's five plus seven, 12? And then those two fields adds them up. 8 plus 1 is 9, and so you can get the summary options. Well, it's right there. Summary options. The only field that has numbers that I've added to my query is the purchase price field that allows me to go ahead and get a total or get the average or the lowest number in that purchase price field or the highest number. And down below, I can count the records and the computers get a total count there. But I'm going to go ahead and click Cancel. We'll do that later on. I just want to keep it simple. We'll just stick with show every field of the record, not just get the totals or the average for those fields or whatever other option that we just went over in the summary options. And click Next. OK, and then it says, finally, what title do you want for your query? It gives us the default. And I don't like this one because it gives me the name of the table. But at the end, it says it's a query. And remember, when I'm working behind the scenes, as we'll go over in later training videos, in design view of other objects, this can fool me because I'm looking at this going, oh, it's a table. And I'd select that thinking it's a table. If I don't come over here and go, oh, it's a query. Well, which is it? So what I'm going to do to keep it simple, I'm just going to get rid of the end suffix saying it's a query and type in the three letter prefix, QRY saying that, okay, great. Now I know, looking at the beginning of it, it's a query, but what's the name of it? Computers. As I look over here, that's a table. Now what's the name of the table? Computers. So when I'm in the design view and I see the names of two computers here, I can just look at the prefix and go, oh, that's the query and that's the table. And then down below, that's all that they need. So do you want to open up the query to modify it? You know, change the design, make a few tweaks, or you just want to go ahead and view the details, the data therein. Let's go ahead and just view the information, click on finish in the data sheet view of our new query. Hey, you can see up at the top the name of it, QRY Computers, and it's been added over here in the navigation pane under the name here, Queries, cool. And again, it's easy to detect even if we didn't have the three letter prefix here because it'll put it in the queries here as opposed to the design view where it's not gonna be this organized and say, hey, this is a query and that's a table. All you get is the name. So that's the only thing that will differentiate between the two names here being the same computers is the prefix. Tibble for table and query for query. And so it pulled in everything I wanted. The asset tag, date received, purchase price, and manufacturer. Oh, is it the ID? Well, we know it's not the ID. But again, if you can't see the entire label for the column, the column header, just hover over to the right hand side until you can see arrows pointing in opposite directions then either click and drag or to do a best fit double click and it fits it to the longest text within that column so let's double click to do best fits on all of them because that's the best thing great and let's go to the design view now if you come up here on the create tab you see over here we don't have the option to change it's only on the home tab that we can change views so there's the design view, or if you don't want to change tabs and keep it on the create tab, that's fine. Just right click on the tab to go to the design view and there you go. It's divided into two sections. The top section is where it contains the tables that this query is based upon. And then down below in the grid, the fields that are viewable in this query selected, of course, from the tables up above. Now, if you can't see all the fields, you can go ahead and scroll, but I don't like scrolling. 
So I'll hover over the bottom border until I can see arrows pointing up and down, click and drag, and there we go. And you can see the relationship that we saw in the relationships window that it's here as well. The relationship carries over. They don't divorce or break apart. And so you can see right here that the manufacturer ID, the primary key, goes to the foreign key field here. And then down below, you've got the name of the field in the top row, and then below that, the table that the field has been taken from. So the asset tag is from the computers, the date received computers, computers, that one's the manufacturers. And if you want to be able to add the manufacturer ID, because maybe you're thinking, well, I'd like to see the number, kind of memorize these things. Well, you can either come down here and click in the field and click on the drop down arrow and it lists all the fields that are available up above, including the asterisks. And the asterisk means that when you select that, it'll include all the fields here. You just don't have to add, like you see down here, each field separately. You just put the asterisk down here and it will automatically add all the fields for you. And we'll go over that in a later training video. But if I want to add the manufacturer's ID, you can click on the drop down arrow and say, okay, we want to go to the manufacturer's table. Now this one says manufacturer, manufacturer. I can't see the end, whether it's just manufacturer or it's the ID. So that's not helpful for me right here. So I'll click off. The other way is just to go ahead and either click and drag it down and add it, or you can come up here and double click. Of course, if I do that again, well, we've got two manufacturer IDs. That's not going to work. So if you made a boo boo, then go ahead and you see that thin gray bar up at the top? When you hover over it, you get this black arrow pointing down. When I'm down below it, don't get the black arrow, so go back up above. When you see the black arrow, click and it selects the entire column. Then hit the delete key on the keyboard and it gets rid of it. Click, delete. Now it doesn't matter which table the manufacturer ID comes from. No, because it's the same thing. So I could do it from the manufacturer's table. Then when I'm done, I can come up here on the related contextual design tab because I'm in the design view and to get to the front view or the data sheet view to view the data that are in these fields here come over here to where it says results and I can click on the view button or I can click on the fun run button the difference between the two is that the run of course will take us to the data sheet view but it'll actually perform the action specified in the query so more specifically you see here where it says select query that is this query type you can select other query types, like make a table based upon this query. So you can take the records and create a new table based upon this query. And when you click on run, it takes us to the data sheet view, but it also takes what you have in here, and through a couple of steps, it'll create a new table. Or you can take the records that's found in this query and add it to another table. Or you can go ahead and do an update, like maybe multiply the purchase price by a percentage. You can do a cross tab or do a delete saying, okay, I want to go ahead and delete certain records within this query. So down below, you've got a criteria field, so you can say, okay, in the asset tag, I just want those asset tags that are less than a certain number, and then the rest I don't want to see, they're obsolete, let's get rid of them. And so when you select delete query and you click run, or any of these other queries in quick run besides the select, it'll take you to the data sheet view, and it will delete the records, update them, add them, or make a table, We'll cover that in a later training video, but because this is a select query, it does nothing but just takes us right to the data sheet view. So that's the fun run button, data sheet view. Let's go back to the design, or you can just click on the data sheet view button, same view. And well, oh, that one's kind of huge, isn't it? If we double click, well, that's the best fit, but that's going towards the largest text in the column. That's the name of the column here, manufacturer ID. And oh my goodness. Look at that. Let's double click really fast. And there you go. Let's click on this one, drag it over here. So they have the manufacturer ID. And since we know it's the ID, we can go ahead and collapse that. So we can just go, well, let's do man and then click off. And then when we're done, if we want to go ahead and close out, let's we'll say, do you want to save the changes? Yes. Double click. We're back to our fancy query. Thanks for watching. Hey, as a quick reminder, if you like my video, please give it a thumbs up. You can also click on me and subscribe to my channel, get notified of the latest videos, and for only $2 a month, you can have access to all my Microsoft Office training videos.